<laughs> Greetings everyone, I'm Zephyrin and I make visual raid guides for Destiny 2. Here is the Root of Nightmares raid guide. I hope you enjoy. Let's start the raid and go for the red border chest. You can follow along the video or simply turn left and stick to the left. You may want to kill the enemies in front of you as you make your way there. As you approach a set of stairs and infrastructure, keep going left until you reach three glowing nods. The red border chest can be activated by connecting a set of seeds scattered across three different sections throughout the raid. Let's jump straight into the raid and head to the red border chest. Seeds must be activated and it varies between light and dark and the order is completely random each time. To access the first seed, simply follow along the path or go straight forward until you reach the very last room with the cabals. Once inside, the path to the first encounter is to your left with the colorful roots and the path to the first seed is straight ahead. Follow down the stairs and you will enter a room where you will see the dark seed to your right as well as the light seed to your left. Go inside the aura around the proper color and shoot it. Then you will head diagonally and shoot the gray orb which will activate the first out of three mechanics for the red border chest. In this case, the proper color was light. Once activated, you will see a confirmation on the bottom left of your screen. Head back up the stairs, and when you exit the room, head to the right and walk along the route. Jump on the platform at the end, where you can rally and start the first encounter. For the first encounter, the same mechanic applies. Enter the aura of the proper orb to grab the Field of Light buff, which will allow you to turn the gray orbs into light seeds. The path is usually predetermined, with the exceptions of a few orbs exchanging position. Follow this map shown on screen for visual help. Thanks to Priony hashtag 2536 for these maps. The job of the runner is simply to grab the Field of Light buff by shooting the Light Seed with the White Aura and activate the Grey Orbs in each section to complete the encounter. Note that a Seed without an Aura cannot grant you the buff and currently serves no other purpose for the mechanic of this encounter. Don't forget to kill your Psions, we will get back to this mechanic in a moment. A simple trick to help track the proper Great Orb, the next Great Orb will always be linked by a little light connection from the very last orb you activated. Pay close attention to the path I'm taking and you should see it for yourself. Once all the light seeds have been activated in a section, 
They will all emit a beam of light and the sweeping terror buff will be removed from your screen. An important thing to remember, multiple people can enter the aura and get the field of light buff at the same time as the runner, but if someone already has the buff active and you shoot it, all grey orbs will be deactivated for around 20 seconds, preventing you from proceeding with the mechanic. This applies throughout the entirety of the raid, so do be careful. For the at clear role, your job is to eliminate all standing enemies and kill Psions to spawn Tormentors. To kill the Psions, simply go inside the bubble and melee them or shoot them. Once killed, a Tormentor will spawn on either left side or right side. The side opposite to where the Tormentor spawns will have an anti-buried champion instead. Killing these Tormentors will extend your sweeping terror buff by adding approximately 35 seconds and make sure to call its location so your team can help you. If the sweeping terror buff reaches 0 seconds, a darkness blast will emit from the bright dark pillar, wiping the entire fire team. For this fight, machine guns are very effective for their ammo economy and its ad clear capabilities. Divinity can be used on tormentors to create an easy crit spot to help you take them down faster. Keep the tormentors for a later phase if you prefer to save time early. You can pick up any ammo laying around if you wish to well skate or shatter skate. Once you're done, you can go pick up your loot at the end and head to the first jumping puzzle. On your way to the second encounter, you will come across a jump pad which will be a core mechanic for the next encounter, but can be substituted with well skating or shatter skating. Towards the end of the path, instead of going left, jump all the way up on the right where the two snipers are and you will encounter a tormentor. Guardian down. Kill it and you can access the secret chest. Guardian down.
Make your way back from where you entered, and at the end of the hallway, there is a jump pad. Go forward and proceed to encounter number 2. Just like the first encounter, you will need to bring the buff to 5 grey orbs per floor for a total of 3 floors. You will need a light runner and a dark runner, the others can clear the enemies. The same rule for the buff applies, you can shoot the buff while multiple people stand in the aura, but if you shoot it while someone has an active buff, the orbs will be disrupted for 20 seconds. The same light buff seen previously now applies to the dark runner, this time under the name Flux of Darkness. The two buffs will be present during the last encounter, with all the same restrictions as now, with the new mechanic applying in the next jumping puzzle as well as the last encounter. For the runner, grab your buff and complete the 5 orbs necessary. In this case, the order will remain the same. No matter your buff color, your route will always be opposite side, same side, opposite side, same side, and finally, opposite side. Once a color is fully connected, a beam of either dark or light will appear on each sheet depending on your appropriate color, just like the first encounter. When both sides are done, wait at the very last seed until you see on the bottom left of your screen a prompt saying your ascent is blocked by interlopers. You may now activate your buff as many times as you like, for you need this buff active to kill the enemies with the appropriate colored smoke. After all the enemies are killed, you may now head to the jump pad to access the next floor. Sometimes, the jump pads are inconsistent. If you prefer, you can well skate or shatter skate across to go faster. For the add clear roll, Kill everything standing and be careful of the anti barrier champion that spawns at the door in the back of the room. There will be one on each floor. For the centurions with smoke, you will need the appropriate buff if you wish to get rid of them. You can grab the buff at the same time as your runner, but be careful not to shoot any orbs as it will disrupt them. The final part of this encounter is the imminent expulsion buff on your screen. Just like Sweeping Terror, this is the amount of time you have per floor before the white mechanic activates. In this case, it is a wall that pushes you off. This time, you cannot refresh or extend the timer, meaning you only have 2 minutes to complete all seeds on your floor. The buff refreshes only when starting a new floor.
After completing the encounter, you can grab your loot on the dark side of the encounter and jump up into the roof. To access the jumping puzzle between the second and third encounter, you must activate a set of three orbs, both for light and dark. The mechanic present during the jumping puzzle is the same as the protection from Nezarak's wife mechanic. For the jumping puzzle though, all you need is to take the field of light buff and use it on a completed dark seed which will give you the darkness refugee buff protecting you from the darkness blast. Follow along this path here for the full route. After that jump pad, stick to the left if you have the field of light buff so you can quickly activate the dark seed next to you. Else, simply go to the right and jump up where the light seed is and you can either go in the back or hop down the ledge and head to the seed shown previously. Before going any further, you can find the second red border chest mechanic in the building on the left. In this case, the color needed was dark. Head back out and follow the path until you arrive at a door, where you must wait for everyone to make it there. When the door opens, head forward and take the stairs on either side. The second secret chest is located inside the room over the door you just entered from, and to open it, head a bit further to the left and look down. You should see a darkness crystal. Shoot it and the door should be open.
Once you collected your loot and made a refugee if needed, head straight forward and follow the stairs. Once you're out of that little building, follow the path in the seeds until the end, where everybody has to group up again to open the door. Luckily, you don't have to run back and forth with the buff. Here are two ways you can evade the wipe mechanic. First, you can go left in the very back, which is the easiest method out of the two, or else, you can go right and jump on the route next to the door. Down. There is also a possible skip, but you cannot pull your whole team to the next encounter. This skip can be done by anyone, but is most effective with well skating and shatter skating. Here is an example of well skating. For shatter skating or doing it normally, the route is the same. Head to the big section on your right. Then head in the back and wait for the explosion. You then want to go to the left and jump on the route directly and jump to the darkness seat in front of you. If you're quick enough, you can run directly to the next light seed, or you can go back to the left and grab the field of light buff. Note that if you skip to the last door, everyone must do the skip, or else none of the doors will open because not all players are waiting at the same door. You may hang around at one of the two save points until the entire fire team arrives at the end, and you can then meet up at the final seed and open the door. Make sure everyone gathers one final time at the very last door where you will meet your very first boss, Zoar. This encounter is quite different from all the others, so let's make it as simple as possible. Let's first explain the room. 
there are two sides, light side on the left and dark side on the right, represented by the light and dark planets floating over the boss. Both sides have two triangular plates with three planets each. The closest plates to spawn, bottom plates, will be planets numbered from 1 to 3, and the top plates, furthest away from spawn, will be from 4 to 6. Now for the core mechanic. Centurions will spawn in the back of the room close to the boss and it is important to kill them both as it will spawn lieutenants. Whoever kills a lieutenant on one side will have a buff called Planetary Insight, which allows you to see on that specific side if the planets are actually dark or light. Your goal is to exchange the incorrect colored planet to its correct side. Once you kill your lieutenant, approach the incorrect planet and you can grab it when you have the prompt Planetary Attunement. Take it and a timer will now start, allowing you to move the planets. Runners, make sure to wait after your opposite plate partner and call out your numbers. There is only one incorrect planet per plate, and bottom plates exchange planets together, just like top plates exchange planets together. If done correctly, a beam of the appropriate color should light up in the middle of each plate. If not, that means your plate did not exchange the correct planets. Once it's done, repeat the same process but this time pay close attention to the planets in the middle. When you kill your lieutenant, you will now be able to see what planets must be dunked on what plate to start damage phase. There will always be two planets of the same color and one of the opposite color. Communicate with your team who takes a planet, but this time you will not dunk it on the other side, you will instead dunk it on the plate in the middle with the appropriate color. If your three planets in the middle match together, you have done it properly and are now ready for damage. You can shoot the little darkness crystal in the air over the boss to start damage phase. To damage the boss, you must grab the appropriate colored buff on a plate, which will alter between light and dark, and the first and last buff will always be the two planets of the same color you dunk. Once your damage phase is done, return to your original position and repeat. Add clearers. Your job is simple again. Eliminate all the enemies in the middle and prioritize centurions when they spawn. Runners will often pass through the enemies, so it's important to clear everything. Last thing, be careful with the boss as he likes to boob guardians off the map. If you die with the planetary shift buff, you will need to restart that phase. last stand, all plates will become dark, so it does not matter where you go. There is no additional mechanic, simply finish him before he wipes your team.
Now that Zo Arc is defeated, we will need to open the route again with the dark and light buff seen earlier. Here is a quick run of both buffs. Here is the full route to the last encounter. If you wish to see the final red border chest seed or a few skips, you may forward the video. You may take the normal route on the right, but I will also show you two ways to skip it with well skating and shatter skating. When you arrive to the wall with several doors, start from the right and it will be the second left on the bottom row. Follow this path to get through.
You can in fact skip this door while your team finishes the mechanic as it is required to continue the raid by jumping into a small hole on the top right. A sword is necessary here to do this. You can simply do a few light swings to position yourself, crouch, and then you can light swing again to go through. For the final red border chest seed, instead of going up and forward to get to Nezarak, jump down on the right and enter the sideways structure. It's fascinating to see the lengths you'll go to reach your goals. Emissaries of pain and death. Connect the appropriate color and you are now done. This time, if all three seeds have been activated properly, a confirmation on the bottom left of your screen will say a great harvest awaits. It's now time to finish this and defeat the final god of pain, Nezarak. You've made it to the end. One last boss to go. Job 1, add clears. Do what you've been doing since the beginning, and that's about it for you now. I recommend one in each lane, left, right, and middle, or at least two add clears. Let's start here with our runners. Dark side, as seen on screen, connect the dots again and you've made it. Same thing goes for the light runner. There is a new mechanic here that runners will need to know. I will explain it in a brief moment. For the very first part, you can just brute force it by finishing both sides before Nezarak even has time to do his wipe mechanic. Note that it is easier to brute force it when you've wiped at least once because the seeds are already present and you don't have to wait for the boss's animation to finish. After the first run, I suggest doing a refuge as you will most likely not have enough time to brute force it again and try to grab ammo. Time for refuge. Just like the jumping puzzle between the second and third encounter, you can bring the field of light buff to a completed dark seed to create darkness's refugee at that location which will protect you from the darkness blast that Nezarak will emit. Alternatively, the opposite is possible too, which means the Dark Runner will bring Flux of Darkness to a completed Light Seed, creating Light's Refugee, protecting you from Nezarak's Light Blast. Make sure to stay inside of the aura of the plate until Nezarak starts glowing white, else your buff could run out if you leave too quickly. How do you know what colors to blast? Simple. 
The Gaze Taker will need to pop both of Nezirax's shoulders, and once the last shoulder is destroyed, a colorful blast of either Darkness, Orange Blast, or Light, White Blast, will emit. Whatever color you will get will be the blast that you need to protect yourself from once he starts glowing with a white light and floats in the air. Gaze Taker. Your job is not only to call out what color is the blast, but also to shoot Nezirax's chest when the little pale nod spawns. At the beginning of each phases, it is important that someone does it because if you don't, he will repeatedly boop all players in the air until someone catches his gaze. Taking his gaze will give you a debuff on your left called Nezirax Hatred for approximately 11 seconds. This buff simply makes Nezirax target you until your buff runs out. A little tip before damage phase. If you do a refuge and Nezirak is on his plate up top, wait until he comes down before finishing the final great orb on one side, or else he will start DPS on top, which is annoying to deal with. When it comes to damage, everyone has a suggested plate. I highly recommend these plates shown on screen, Light Plate 4-5, Light Plate 2-3, and Dark Plate 2-3. A lot of people prefer Light Plate 6 as it's open and Nezirak doesn't run behind a wall, which is a good damage spot, but because the back of the flower is so open, if Nezirak jumps and suppresses you, you can fall off the map and die, or have to wait until you are no longer suppressed to jump back up. Repeat this as many times as needed until he falls one more time. For final stand, it is the same as Zoar. Kill him as fast as possible before he wipes your fire team. No additional mechanic is needed. Congratulations, you have now conquered the Root of Nightmares raid. You can now purchase one red border weapon you have previously acquired every week on top of the weapon from the red border chest. Thank you so much for watching, and if you'd like to see more, let me know what I should cover next. Have a wonderful raid experience, and a wonderful rest of your day, Guardians.